Hello and welcome to the first of our Avid tutorials. I'm Liam from Earth Prime Productions. Every week we post new articles and tutorials on our website www.earthprimeproductions.com and it's the first of our Avid series. So to make sure that you get the latest videos as soon as they come online, remember to click the subscribe button below this video. In 2011, after Apple released their Final Cut X update, a lot of people switched over to Avid, so with this in mind, I will be making the odd comparison between Avid and Final Cut along the way, so that things make a bit more sense. Let's get started. Now, for this first tutorial, we're simply going to focus on basic setup, assuming that you have just installed Avid and are launching it for the first time. You may notice that I'm using version 5.5 of Avid, but it doesn't matter if you're on version 5, 5.5, or even version 6, the setup and layout is all exactly the same, nothing's changed. Okay, so Avid's just started, and you're first up presented with this select project window, which is very different to when you start Final Cut Pro, when it just throws you straight into a brand new project or the last project you had open. So here, select project, you need to get past this window before you can get in and do anything. So the first thing you're going to do is select your user profile. So it's got my default one of here of Earth Prime Productions, but I'm going to create a new one here. And we're going to name it Avid Tutorials. Now the reason why you create your own profile is that all your settings, everything that you customize within Avid is going to be saved to that user profile. So if you're working on something and you need to change user, someone else wants to come in and take over, they can just switch user profile and they'll have all their own preferences, all their own shortcuts, everything saved and available to them without messing up your own settings. So that's quite nice. So now you've selected your profile, you need to select what type of project, what project you're going to be working on. So you've got three different types of projects, private, shared and external. Private are ones that are only viewable to you and your user profile. Shared are available to everyone and external are on external storage devices. So we're going to create a new private project and it gives you this window. First up I'll name it Avid Tutorial. And then you're going to select what type of format and settings you want for it. So this is very similar to Final Cut Pro's Easy Setup which you get first time you ever launch Final Cut and you can also change it within any project anytime and uh, change it to any settings you want. So in here you've got a whole bunch of different ones to pick from and when you pick them, down here it tells you what type of stuff works with those settings. So HDV, you know, tends to be this. And what I'm actually going to pick is 1080i5994, purely because I've been working with a lot of XD cam footage lately. So I'm going to go for that. And everything else here is looking quite nice. So I'm going to click OK. And we're going to go in. So the project's good. I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to load up Avid for me. And as you can see, it's just kind of thrown those windows over there. We saw that it started making some small ones and it hit them behind the bigger one. Okay. So the basic setup here, layout, isn't necessarily something that's going to be good for working with. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is customize this. Change the layout to something that works for you. Now I know a lot of people will be working with two monitors set up or more. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to base it around one. If you use more, then just you know lay them out on more. Okay, so for doing the setups, we're going to look at the different setup settings, which will be under tool set. We have all of these here color correction, and it gives you the tools relevant for color correction, source record edit, effects editing, audio editing, capture. And the last one on tool set is full screen playback, which simply does full screen playback. Okay, so but you look at these. And they're not necessarily a way that you're going to want them. I mean, I don't want an audio mixer on top of where I'm going to have video playing. So, you know, I move that out of the way and it's the same with everything. You know, you're going to want to move these around and customize them to a way that works for you. So I'm going to start with source record editing. Okay. Nice, simple layout and get this to a way that I want it to look. Okay. So these big window bits up here, that's fine. Okay. And move my timeline up purely because I just don't like having this big gap between. I like it to everything to be nicer and close together. Okay, so I've thrown that on there. Now this little window here, I'm going to throw up the top and resize it so it's more uniform. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the timeline, just like in every video editing software, 
package that's out there, all our timelines. And now we've got the windows exactly the same as they are in Final Cut, okay? Now up here, we've got a bunch of different tabs. We have bins, just like in Final Cut, you'll have all your bins here. We see that it's created one for us already, have a tutorial bin. Settings, transitions, format, usage, info, okay? So these are all the different tabs that come on here. And you'll notice that there was one that there, which is settings, okay? A whole bunch of stuff with ticks next to them, right? What this is, is simply your settings. In Final Cut, you'd normally go up the top and you'd have a whole bunch of different preferences you can change. In Avid Media Composer, if you click preferences, it just means this. If I had a different tab open like bins, it just switches to settings. Because every setting you could want is in here. And you might notice as well that just at the top of it, it says Avid Tutorials. That was the user profile I made. And you've got Earth Prime Productions, User Tutorials, Avid Tutorials. And what this is, is it's got all of your own settings are saved within there. It's just disappeared because it's just gone down here. Okay? So, now you saw how that moved. That's something that we want to change. We don't want it to keep changing around like that. Okay? The reason it went like that is it just went to default because I hadn't saved any settings yet. So I've got this like this, I've got the settings tab there, I've got bins. And we're gonna change the do a save to the settings in just a second. So I've got my bin here. If I double click that, I get my bin, and I'm gonna use that to fill in this nice little gap down here. Okay. So now the layout is in a way that I'm happy to work with this. This is all right, I'm comfortable with this. All right, so I jump back into tool set. What's to stop it from all changing around like I did just now? Click save current. So you see what one you've got selected because it has a little tick by it. And then if you just go save current, it's now saved. So I'm still within source record editing, but now the layout is how I want it. If I go to something else, color correction, and then jump back to source record editing, it's how I left it. Now you can do that with each one of these. So you go to it, you're gonna move these around, you're gonna save it however you want, save current, and then when you jump around, oh, wrong one, everything's where you left it, which is quite nice, okay? And these are all saved to your user profile, which mine's Avid Tutorials for this one, okay? So that's that sorted out. Now. Something that's quite nice with bins, I'm going to talk about here, okay? We can rename bins, just like in most programs, okay? So we're going to call this one video, okay? And then I'm going to create a new bin, and we're going to call this one music, okay? This is the bin I'm going to put my music in. So now I've got another bin. Hurrah! And uh, now I want, oh, maybe I'll have another bin. I'm going to click new bin, and I'll name this one uh, graphics. And now I've got another bin. And you know, this is all starting to look a little bit cluttered because now I've got all these extra bins I need to make room for. So that's kind of a pain. Now you'll notice you can't, in Final Cut, you'd normally just like, you can drag the tabs and then you can merge them all together. And you'll see you click and drag, it's not doing anything. You try and stick them on top of each other. No, we're not, we're not combining anything here. So nothing is, we're not moving anything. So how do we deal with this? Well, I'm gonna close these. Close these bins to begin with, okay? So, bins, bit of a pain. So we're gonna go into the settings for the bins and we're gonna change it. So we're gonna find bin, double click it, and now we get the bin settings, okay? Now, first up on here, we see the autosave. Lovely little thing, I'm sure everyone that's watching this thing loves autosave, and I don't know about you, but I'm very paranoid. 15 minutes isn't enough time, you know, I prefer just five. If you prefer 10, then do 10, whatever you want. Autosave is in here, it's in bin settings, that's where you're gonna change your autosave, okay? And now, you see at the bottom of all these other settings, we've got a nice little thing here called super bin, all right? I'm gonna enable super bin, okay? So, what is super bin? Well now, if, I, if you double clicked on one of these bins before, so double click, you get the window like this, right? And double click, we have all these windows. Huge pain, right? I'm gonna close them. 
instead of double clicking, with super bin enabled, you can just single click on one and it creates the super bin. So you'll see just at the top here it now says super bin. So I'm going to resize that down to where I want it. And again, I'm going to save. So it says super bin at the top, and now we've got this little icon here, which is kind of like a bunch of things stacked on, on top of each other. Okay, a bunch of windows one on top of the other. Right. So what this means, I've got the video bin open at the moment just like it was before. But if I single click on music, it's now just thrown it in a super bin. And if I single click on graphics, that's now down on the super bin as well. There's no other bins, it's just, just this one bin. Now, the icons up here for each of these has changed because these bins are now open, okay? But we can only see one. I can only see graphics at the moment. So if you click on this little icon here, it then gives the names of the other bins that are available for you to switch to. So I click video, we're now looking at video, music, the flash of change to music. So it's just a nice way of keeping everything together, keeping all your bins in one place without having them all over the shop. Okay? So now that's quite nice, and I'm just gonna save current, everything's all great. So there you have it. So that's the basic layout and setup for Avid. So now you've got this all set up, you're ready to go, okay? Now there's one more thing you might wanna customize before you actually start editing, and that would be your keyboard. I know a lot of people out there like to have their own keyboard shortcut keys, okay? A lot of people don't like the default ones. So how are we gonna change it? Well, we're gonna jump in to settings, okay? So we're going to the settings tab again. My user profile again is still set to Avid Tutorials because anything I change is gonna be saved to my profile. So if I go down, Amongst all these settings, we have keyboard. So I'll double click on keyboard, and now we've got the keyboard open. Great. So this is what all the shortcut keys are at the moment. Spacebar being played, pretty standard, okay? But what if you want to change them? Normally, if you were looking at this in Final Cut Pro, you'd have an extra bit at the side here, which lists all the other possible shortcuts, and you can just drag and drop them onto whatever keys you want. But obviously, you can't do that here because it's just a picture of the keyboard. So we're going to go up into tools, okay? Now we're going to go down on tools to command palette, okay? Which is also command free. So I click that, we get another new window open, command palette. Now on here, it's split into a whole number of different tabs and amongst all of these is every possible shortcut key you could ever want sitting here waiting for you. And when you find the one that you're looking for, so let's say full screen playback, you just click on it, and you're going to drag it down to wherever you want to put it. So say I want it to be F8, boom. That is now F8. So full screen playback. Great, just customize it. Hurrah. So maybe I also want to put, um, let's do find bin. So I decide that I actually want to put find bin on F7. We'll put that down there. Find bin is now F7. Great. But what if I didn't actually want it to be there on F7? So, well, there's one here that's blank. I'll drag that over there. Find bin's now gone off F7, it's now blank. And maybe I actually wanted that somewhere else. So you'll see up here amongst all these shortcut keys, everything on here and everything down here is all customizable. So if I want to put this here, there we go. I've now just made it here. So great. Find bins now there. And if I decide that actually I don't want any of these buttons up here, I want like a play button here, but I've got play on the space bar. Why do I want that? Well, let's just blank it out. Uh, maybe I'll put something else there. Maybe I want that to be dual split. There, so there we go. That's now dual split. Nice and simple. So um, I now want to change it back to play. I'm just going to go like that and it's back to how I wanted it originally. So again, and you can change them down here as well. So if you wanna put a button down here, you put a button down there, no big deal. Now, what's also quite nice is you've got an option here. We were on button to button reassignment. Zoom in to show you. We were on button to button reassignment. We've got active palette, and if we come over here, we have menu to button reassignment, okay? So now I'm gonna select that. 
and now you'll see my icon has now changed okay and that icon is I guess meant to be a drop down menu right so let's say that this button here I want to change to be a drop down menu key okay so now I've selected that I'm gonna go up here and I'll go hmm what little t um, shortcut did I want I wanted um, multi camera mode maybe that was the button that I wanted so now I'm gonna click on that and if I come down here it's now changed to an MM multi camera mode so you can take any of these functions from the menu and you can reassign them to be any button down here that you want or you can make them a keyboard function as well so if I bring back my keyboard here it is so I'm on menu to button reassignment I want F8 to be one of these so I'm going to make that um, let's do render at position that's now F8 will now render at position so you can customize all of these keys to do whatever you want and they will all be saved to your own user profile okay so again here Avid Tutorials everything that I've changed is going to be saved to here so if anyone else wants to come on at any point and take over the project then you can just change user profile to another one and all of the settings that you just done like my layout is now gone so it all goes to whatever that person's settings are so Earth Prime Production is now set for that and if I jump back to Avid Tutorials it's going to load back the settings how I wanted them the bins disappeared it just needs to be open so I click once it's back where I wanted it so there you have it basic setup for Avid now you're set to go. Don't forget you can subscribe to these videos by clicking the subscribe button below this on YouTube and also on www.earthprimeproductions.com.